for the last five weeks, we've been uh, exploring how we have new life in Christ, and that there is grace and new life from God all over us, all over and around in the world. God is a God who is reconciling the world to God's self through Jesus Christ, which means that the things that divide us, prejudice, fear, even death, are taken on by Christ, taken to the cross, and destroyed. And even more than destroyed on the cross, from them God brings new life, brings unity, brings hope. Our God, who is all about relationship, who is what I would call a missional God, seeks us out and restores us to one another and to God's self. God gathers us together, gathers with us, to bring new life, to point out the new life that is already present in the world and in our lives, and to speak the good news that God's love is for all the world. And all the world will have new life. For in Christ, death has been destroyed on the cross, and from that death, new life has come. So in today's lesson, Paul points to the wonderful fact that our differences, the things that divide us are all nothing. The one thing that matters is new creation, new life from Christ. A new creation is everything, Paul says. As I think about the things that divide us, one of the most prominent dividers I see is fear. Weighing heavy on our hearts and minds recently is the trend of violence that we see in our world. A few weeks ago, we had the shooting in Orlando, and this week, the attack at Istanbul, and the countless other instances of violence each day that may not make the headlines. We see these events happening at, at escalating frequencies, and we justifiably fear. And out of our fear, we respond one of two ways. We either hide or we fight back, the fight or flight instinct. So either we turn off the news and hope that the violence and hatred will just go away, or we turn to thoughts of retaliation, thoughts about how more violence or greater division from those that might hurt us would give us protection. In short, our instinct, our tendency is to turn in on ourselves and shut out the rest of the world in one way or another. Either we ignore their very presence and we hide, or we ignore their humanity and try to demonize them and fight. But there is another way, the way of new life. It is the way of the cross. See, we are not created for fear, but are part of and pointers to the new life that is in the world, the new creation. God's work through our actions in the world creates new life out of the very places that cause us to fear. Division, death, violence, and fear, these are the realities of the world. Paul says we have, or he calls them of the flesh, sowing seeds to the flesh. And we all live with these burdens. We all live in these realities. But that is not the whole story. God, our missional God, comes to us in loving grace in Jesus Christ to reconcile the world back to God, to engage the world in loving, renewing, life-creating relationship, the very opposite of fear, relationship. New life, a new creation that is Reconciled relationship with God and with one another is God's final word on violence and death. It's shown in the cross of Christ. So this ultimate reality that is God's will someday fully be present, but even now, the new life from death is here. In the very places where we find death and division, there God is present. Christ, in his love for us, goes to the very darkest places for us to take on rejection, pain, fear, and violence, 
to go to the cross for us and with us. And so it is in these very places where we meet the one who brings new life. We meet Jesus Christ. It is in these very darkest places where the reality of God's love, of God's new creation, grips us and takes hold of us. And with Christ, we also are brought together with the ones from whom we are divided, whether it be by our own divisions or by death itself. We are all grabbed by Christ and brought back together with Him, through Him. Reconciliation, new life, new creation out of the very death, division, and fear we see. These, this is work that God alone can do. Work that Christ alone accomplishes in us and in the world through the Holy Spirit's activity in our lives. A new creation is a communal reality. It is for all the world. And it's one that's made and it's one that's made manifest in the body of Christ. It is a communal reality and it shapes how we live with each other. So we all, all of us as God's created and loved people, have identity in Christ that removes shame, removes failure, removes the things in our past that aren't so good. Our identity in Christ strips away the things that would divide us, and it unmasks our common humanity, our common bond as Christ's beloved, as God's creation. So as Christ's body, as the church, we are the instrument of Christ's grace for the sake of the world. As Christ's body, we gather each week for worship because God's new creation is a, rea is a communal reality that shapes how we live with each other. And so we gather here. We gather here to worship and to hear that message of love again as we confess our sins and hear the word of forgiveness. We gather to hear the message of love in the reading of Scripture and the proclamation of God's word and to, to hear and see and taste that experience, that message of God's love and new life in the bread and the wine at the table. And we gather here because God gathers us as an act of defiance against the divisions that we put in place. So we gather and worship not in order that we might be God's children and God's light for the world, but because we are God's children, because we are an instrument of God's love for the sake of the world. God's new creation is a communal reality that shapes how we live with each other, and so we gather. Not only here, but also uh, in the rest of the world. God's people, you, gather and are gathered everywhere in your lives. You gather at work and at play, in the festivities, and in hard times when you gather as well. And so there too, even I would argue there especially, you are the bearers of the message of new creation, seers of new life that is in and from Christ Jesus in the world. So Paul says, a new creation is everything. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision are anything, but a new creation is everything. In other words, it doesn't matter what I think divides or should divide us, but what matters is that God's love unites us, unites the world in Christ. What matters is that we all share this world that is broken by division and violence and death, and that we share a common need for new creation, new life. For God's love. What matters is that you and I, no matter what we believe or who we are, where we come from or what we've done, but that we continue to work out of God's new creation. That through us, God continues to bring new life into the world as together we sow unity, love, peace, and life. What matters is that we live no longer in fear of one another, but in trust in God, recognizing one another's createdness and humanity apart from whatever divides us. 
What matters is that we enter into mutuality, into relationship with one another. As Paul says, sharing one another's burdens, struggles, and joys. What matters is that I see that you, whoever you are, are loved by God. No matter who you are. And in seeing that God loves you, I just may see that I am also loved by God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.